Eminem, or Slim Shady, has recently just released an album which is going viral. In his album, he has a song called Antichrist, which we Muslims refer to as Dajjal. Music is a tool used by Shaitan to misguide the people. The Quran does not specifically refer to music itself. Some scholars, however, have interpreted the phrase idle talk, which is discouraged as including music. It was reported in Sahih al-Bukhari and elsewhere that the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said that there would be among his ummah those who would allow zina, the wearing of silk, drinking of alcohol, and musical instruments. Let's hear a breakdown of the song by Eminem and its meanings from an ex-black magician who has now reverted to Islam. So on his new album, he just dropped a song titled Antichrist, and it has blown me away the fact that they're just not even hiding the demonic rituals anymore within their music. So the way the Illuminati works to get these demons or evil jinn into the host is they do a ritual of sorts to do invocation. Now there's a difference between invocation and exvocation rituals. The invocation is like you're inviting the spirit into your body, into your soul. It is, in other words, possession. Evocation rituals are like a phone call, like they're just communicating or speaking with the spirit. Invocation rituals are significantly more intense and a lot more difficult to accomplish, actually. Possession's kind of challenging depending on the situation. Now, looking at these lyrics now, it is absolutely absurd. The first thing he says is Marshall, he's the Antichrist. Now, a lot of the time, these artists, they get new nicknames for the jinn that is bound to their body. And what they do is the jinn fuels the creativity to pump the Dijal system into music, to put into people's ears and motivate them into doing haram or sins. Now, I'm gonna just skip to the parts that are really juicy. The whole entire song is just absolutely obscure. But keep in mind, when he refers to himself as the Antichrist, he's talking about the Dijal system. There's two parts to the Dijal or the Antichrist. One is the Dijal in the flesh, which we know has one of his eyes is bulging like a grape and has all these characteristics that we can see. Now the Dijal system's slightly different. It isn't the flesh. What it is is a energy source, a mind setting that is sweeping the nation. Is that a gang sign? Have you, um... Oh, like you don't know what it is. You don't know what that is. I have no idea. Well, you don't know. Jimmy Fallon doesn't know. David Letterman doesn't know. Well, we don't know. All the comics and show business don't know what this is. <laughs> right? Yeah. What is it? Come on, Jimmy. Seriously, the time is up. People are hip to this kind of stuff. For years now, talk show hosts, people on television, people in sitcoms have been hired by the government to <laughs> throw you off the track, to distract you, to make you laugh and stuff like that, make you happy and docile so you don't know what's really going on. You know, and they get out there in the woods in a circle naked and they decide these things and, you know, <clears throat> and. Yeah, look at him, look at him trying to, <laughs> look at him trying to come up. It's hilarious, hilarious. And you know, and I'm sick of, uh, hold on a second. You know what they're trying to do? Who? This thing is buzzing, hold on. They're trying to turn us into, you know, uh, you know, consumer drones of some sort. Hold on, I just gotta get this. And, yeah. Although said in a sarcastic way, actor and comedian Jim Carrey exposes some of these secrets. What's even worse is the crowd just clapping and laughing completely unaware of the implications of what he is saying. We are losing critical thinkers and just gaining more sheep and zombies. So you see, it's not just the music industry influenced by these powers. It's all forms of entertainment that is being shoved in our faces. Now let's continue analyzing the song by Eminem. And this is why I say things like people act like zombies. This is a direct product of the Dijon system. Now in the first verse, this is where things start getting a little bit juicy. Right off the bat, he starts talking about how he's went with Ben Affleck, himself, Seth Green, hanging on the left wing of Jeffrey Epstein's jet screen. Like, he just talks about how he's with Epstein on his way to Epstein's island. Now I understand being edgy and wild and, and fun, right? We'll even put the word fun to it. But this is absurd. Talking about being involved with something of that magnitude is, is not a joke in any way. Now immediately after he starts talking about how he's on his way to Epstein's Island, he starts speaking about how these thoughts creep into his head and it's not him. And then immediately says, they brainwashed me. 
It doesn't matter how deep of an Illuminati puppet they are, they will always slip up and the truth comes out. This is due to the subconscious connection that they have with the Jinn. It's like almost as if their soul is fighting for control over one body and the truth and little bits of information is going to pop out of them. It is past the point of a conspiracy. We have all the information in front of us. They're telling us what they're doing and people still choose to fall for it. It's, it's actually insane. Now jumping to the end of the second verse, he just keeps ranting some off the wall sh but all the way at the bottom of it, it talks about how he sinfully get into spitting the devil in me, I do his bidding. So he openly talks about how he does the bidding for the devil. This is another one of those times where they're talking about the Dijal system. It's obvious he doesn't work directly for the devil. What it is, is there's a jinn attached to him that's doing so. Humans don't really have direct connection to Satan himself. It doesn't work that way. And then after that verse, he just starts talking about how you want to dance with the devil and repeats dance with the devil four or five more times after that. This, this repetition technique is very powerful. This is the exact same thing that the Scientologists use to control people. It's through this weird manipulation game where you do repetition over and over again. And it's actually one of the original old school marketing techniques where they just say the same thing over and over and over again on a radio commercial to try to get you to buy a product. Now, when it comes to the Illuminati conversation, I understand I lose a lot of people. A lot of people still believe that the Illuminati is just a conspiracy, but I want you guys to think about something for a minute. And because the restrictions of all these social media platforms, I can't directly say the name of the individuals who are the Illuminati, but I can ask the right question so you can figure it out yourself. So think about all the people that Kanye exposed and said, this group of people is on every, every influencer, every media personality's contract. Okay, the people that Kanye talked about frequently recently. And everybody knows this group of individuals is involved in media from start to finish. They own everything. Now take that bit of information and then apply all that to the Illuminati. People say the exact same thing about the Illuminati, that the Illuminati owns the media industry, they own the news outlets, and they do X, Y, and Z. So why do we use two different names for the exact same thing. And it's no surprise that the Tiny Hat Club is using Kabbalistic rituals as the Illuminati, and they just use the name Illuminati to divert people's attention away from what they're really doing. And what's really fascinating about the Kabbalah and this conversation in general is this is how I found the Quran and this is how I found Islam. I got to a point in my studies where there was two monotheistic beliefs that I hadn't really studied as much, so I picked up the Quran and the Kabbalah at the exact same time. And over time, the Quran and Islamic teachings just got better. The more I learned, the better it got. With the other side of the fence, which I I can't name it just got worse and where they lost me is whenever the teacher started to explain morality to me in the Kabbalah it teaches that there's no such thing as good and bad and the example they use is if a tsunami would hit and wipe out an entire village that they said well maybe everybody losing their life in that village may be a bad thing if you look at it on the surface but for the construction company that rebuilds the city, it is the greatest thing that ever happened to them. Therefore, that a tsunami ending a bunch of people's lives is not a negative thing. And that's where I totally disconnected from that side is because you can create positive moments without causing a negative to somebody else. If you're profiting off of somebody else's misery, that's a negative thing. There's nothing positive about that. If you're causing somebody else pain or capitalizing on somebody else's pain, doesn't make it a good thing. And this is exactly how these people think. They justify their negative demonic actions because they make money off of the situation. And because they justify all these evil actions, they take it to the point where they stuff it in their music and then they feed it to your children, they feed it to your wives, they feed it to your friends and your family. They want to corrupt everybody and they're not going to stop at anything. It is stuff like this where they're not even hiding it anymore. They're making it apparent. They don't care if we find out. They want us to know at this point because nobody's going to believe them. People like me just get stuffed in the dark and nobody listens to us. But that's about to change really soon.